Roger Umler still cringes when hail or windstorms head toward his family's 460 acres of orchards in Conklin, Michigan. But a redesigned insurance program for agricultural producers called Whole Farm Revenue Protection has him less on edge in those weeks before the apples, peaches, and cherries are safely harvested and shipped from the Centennial Fruit Farm. This is still farming, so we kind of accept some risk anyways. So with our uh, whole revenue insurance, we, we still feel we're taking the risk, but there's still that backing there. Producers need to sell at least three types of crops or livestock to qualify for the whole farm revenue protection or WFRP's highest levels of coverage and maximum premium contribution from the government. Those with two commodities are eligible at lower coverage rates. Single commodity producers are ineligible for the higher premium contribution from taxpayers, but can obtain protection. For those farms that are well diversified, roughly speaking, uh, three or more crops, then the premium subsidy rate the part that the government pays versus what the grower pays is significantly larger than it is for the standard corn, soybean, and, and wheat, cotton, and rice policy. The risk for the whole portfolio is less than a risk for an individual crop, and they want to essentially incentivize people to consider the product. Whole farm revenue protection was based on two pilot programs that failed to gain widespread popularity in the dozen or so years of their existence. A mandate in the 2014 Farm Bill spurred USDA to launch Whole Farm on a limited basis in 2015. By 2016, the program had been fine-tuned and was made available to producers across the country. The value of the commodities covered under the plan grew 109%, from $1.1 billion to $2.3 billion. But while most states have gained enrollment, Whole farm revenue is still dwarfed by other crop insurance programs and represents just one-tenth of one percent of the more than two million policies partially supported by the federal government. The total value covered by those policies, including the more popular multi-peril crop insurance, topped $100 trillion in 2016. In recent years, Congress has begun pushing farmers toward greater reliance on insurance programs rather than relying on direct subsidies or disaster payments that follow catastrophic weather events. Congress basically routinely did these off-budget disaster schemes. The argument has been what level of coverage and what kind of product do you have to offer so you're making payments to growers commensurate with what the risk is, not what the deal of the day, so to speak, is. Umler, who is co-owner of Centennial Fruit and part of the fourth generation to work this Michigan orchard, says the whole farm plan seems to offer a better mix of cost efficiency and protection for the family's orchards compared to other government-supported insurance programs. Unlike insurance programs based on expected yield, WFRP looks at an operation's annual revenue stream over three to five years. Producers decide how much of that revenue they want to protect, ranging from 50 to 85 percent, knowing they will pay a higher rate for more coverage. The plan also covers livestock at values up to $1 million. For Centennial, the program takes away the risk of having an adjuster try to estimate yield losses after severe weather damages their crops. Instead, any reimbursements are based on concrete numbers from past tax records. I think there's the simplicity of it makes it work. You know, there's no, it's hard, it'd be really hard to cheat the system, which is nice and you can be confident in that. And it's a safety net for, for the food supply. Kelly Jackson of Daniels Produce in Columbus, Nebraska, which has signed up for a third year under Whole Farm, says the loss adjusters sometimes lack familiarity with the less commonly grown fruit and vegetable varieties. Jackson, who runs the 500-acre vegetable farm with her parents and brother, says if some produce is still harvested after a disaster, hidden blemishes can hurt marketability. Whole Farm's use of an operation's historic revenue stream helps work around that problem. 
In 2014, the year before Whole Farm, when we had that huge hailstorm, we had, I think it was 60 or 70 acres of cabbage just shredded. Everybody had disasters. The adjusters took a good solid 10 days to get out here. And by then, 10 days later, it had started to grow back. And it made heads, but a lot of it had black rot. The family, who has farmed their land for four generations, had already paid crews to harvest the cabbage before the extent of the damage was discovered. Sometimes all you're doing is going farther in the hole and you don't know it until the dust settles because you're just in it in the moment and all you want to do is do your best to save your crop. Daniel's produce had one of just 10 whole farm policies in Nebraska as of 2016. But those numbers may increase as Nebraska Extension works to educate private insurance companies about the program. But if you're a field corn soybean person that also have, I mean, they can get this too, you know, and if they're into livestock and sheep or whatever and, alf, you know, alfalfa, they're, that's three commodities. But I don't think a lot of people know that this exists because there's not a lot of agencies yet willing to take on the complexity of this. Michigan State's Black says whole farm revenue also provides some incentive for producers to consider or continue with greater crop and livestock diversity. But they really were starting from the point of view of what can we do that actually exploits the nature of diversity of, of crops. Umler sees whole farm as a way to shield his family's legacy against disaster. You know, right now we've got trees ordered out for 2018 and down payments on them. And of course, like any farmer, we have loans out that are due and sure helps with our banking. If we had two bad years in a row, we could be out of business here. So to have that backing is, it's good to know that they're kind of helps protect the family and the business and all the work we put into it, not just my generation. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.